All right, hey, good afternoon. Uh, obviously, I had a chance to go back and watch the film after getting back pretty late, early Sunday morning, technically. Uh, obviously, quite a few good things on there to hopefully build off of and, and highlight where when you put in a good week of preparation and you execute, uh, good things happen from that. But still, obviously, uh, quite a few things that we have to improve upon and, and get better at if we're going to win football games. And so uh, but that, was, that was a heck of a football game. Both teams going back and forth making plays. And like I said, post game, they, they made one or two more there in the fourth quarter to tip the balance, and, and that's football. And so we have, to, we have to look at the things that we can do to set ourselves up to execute better in situational football and, and to make those game-changing plays. And that's how you come out on top. But uh, we, we find ourselves we're coming off back-to-back -back losses, and we're facing a program that probably most teams – don't want to be facing in that scenario, but Alabama is, is playing very well right now. Uh, obviously, as talented of a program, their roster as any team in the country. Uh, on defense, I think they're playing as good as anyone in the country. I mean, they're playing lights out on defense. Uh, they are fun to watch, except for the week that you have to play them, but they're uh, very impressed. And then on, on offense, that seems to me like every week they are further identifying exactly what their identity is and what they do really well and how do they play to their strengths. And they're still extremely talented, big and physical up front. Quarterback is as athletic of a, as anyone in the country. Uh, stable of running backs who tremendous lateral quickness and strength at the point of attack and then receivers who can blow by you. And, and Jalen Milrose throwing the ball over a bunch of teams' heads for big plays over the top. And so I think they're, ident they're like I said, they're getting better every week, confirming who their identity is. Identity is playing to their the strength of their defense, and that's going to be quite the challenge for us. So with that, I'll open up to questions. Coach, last year one of the messages from Mike Leach after that game was the fact that a lot of times the team might be looking at the at the jersey. How do you battle against that and try to get this team over the hump? I didn't. I'm, I'm not on record saying that at all. So I said Mike Leach last year said that that was one of the messages he had after the game last year. And that's not going to be my message to the team. So we got to go out. We got to focus on us, and we got to play. Right? We got to execute. That's what football comes down to. You got to show up excited to play, with energy, and you got to do your job. Doesn't matter who it's against. We got to do our job better. Justin, a couple of uh, defensive questions. Um, you mentioned Milrow and just the fact the past two weeks, uh, Daniels and then Bradley last week had really high completion percentages. Is there anything secondary-wise, schematically-wise, that can be done differently to try to limit how many passes are, are being completed uh, from, from opposing quarterback? Yeah, we need to figure it out. We need to figure it out. Um, you know, gave up two long touchdowns on man coverage, and if you want to play the tightest coverage you can, usually man's the one you go to, but you can't, you can't allow it to be explosive plays for, for touchdowns. Uh, if a guy does catch the ball, you got to be able to get on the ground. And so then you obviously go into more zone concepts, right, whether they be true zone or kind of pattern match where you it turns to man after the pattern declares. Uh, so we have those in the playbook as well. And then, you know, you get in the pattern match man world. Obviously, when the quarterback pulls it down and scrambles, that becomes a little bit of an issue. So you usually have to take someone out of the rush and, and spy them a little bit. Um, or you can play zone coverage and have a whole bunch of eyeballs on the quarterback. But then, obviously, you get picked apart a lot of times in zone. So, But, yeah, we got to do something. And then uh, with the defense in front. Uh, it would not be in my best interest to tell you exactly what our plans are. <laughs> I, don't I don't think. Uh, with the defensive front, front Travion Williams and uh, didn't make the trip last week, and then uh, Demonte Russell got got hurt. Just curious if you have updates with those guys, and is there any concern with I guess the lack of healthy bodies up front, you know, heading into this week? Yeah, like I said, Travion was un unfortunately unable to go last week, and Demonte was in the game and he played. He just got he got dinged up a little bit, and so like like everyone on our roster, we evaluate him week to week, and if medically it's safe for them to be out there and the trainer's good to go with them, then they're cleared to play and we play them. And if, if not, then it's next man up mentality. Along those lines, Coach, uh, we saw Woody kind of get banged up late in the game. How is he today? I think Woody's going to be just the same as I saying. We're going to evaluation, give him as much time as possible during the week. If Woody feels good to go and the training staff clears him good to go, 
he'll go. I mean, we know what he'll go. All right? And if not, then that's why you, that's why you got depth. That's why you got other guys in the room. Zach, uh, what do you think makes uh, Nick Saban, you know, such a great coach? And I'm curious, how many kind of interactions have you had with him? Have you kind of met him and, and spoken with him personally at all? Uh, I've, I've not had many interactions other than just a, a hello or a greeting at head coaches' meetings. Um, I don't – I got to get back to the office and get to work at some point, so I can't give you all the reasons what makes him a great head coach. But, uh, I mean, he knows the fundamentals, techniques, schematics of every position on the field on both sides of the ball. He's a tremendous recruiter. He hires – Good of staffs as anywhere in the country who are good developers. They're good teachers of the game, and they're really good recruiters. Uh, he's probably as good as anyone at program management, overseeing everything that goes into putting together a winning culture and program. I mean, he's uh, seemed to me like he's probably the best to ever do it at the college level. So. But I'm not qualified to speak on all the reasons. I've never, I've never worked for him or never really got to spend much time around him. So for a really good answer with evidence, uh, you would have to talk to someone who's, who's worked for him or got to experience that firsthand. I, I, I have not. Kevin Barbet moved up top last week. What went into that decision and what kind of results did you think that provided you all against South Carolina? Yeah, he just, he just told me, hey, he thought he could go up there and uh, might change up the dynamic or, you know, I mean, I think every, every coach, every play caller likes doing it. You love the view from the top, right? You have, I mean, you get an all 22 view. Uh, what you lose out on is being down there on the sideline and, and getting those personal interactions with the players and feeling the energy and some of that stuff. Uh, obviously he was calling it down from the sidelines. He didn't think we were getting a good enough result. So he said, well, you gotta do something different, right? I mean, obviously the definition of insanity is continue to do the same thing, expect different results. And so he made a change. It appears that we moved the ball uh, better, made quite a few explosive plays. He called some really good plays uh, for the defenses they were in, and hopefully that will continue to be the, the case with him up there. So I imagine he'll go up again this week, but if he says he wants to go down on the sideline, call from there. We'll do that too, I guess. Zach, I wanted to ask you about the last possession of the first half from Saturday. I think 35 seconds you guys go down there and, and steal three points there at the end of the half. Um, what, I guess, are you looking for in those situations in terms of, of playing to the aggressiveness and, and, and you know, going after sort of that, that last you know, possession there and a half? And I guess, um, I guess how much maybe your offensive success in that first half maybe dictated that decision to, to try to get another possession out of it? Oh, I think in all those kind of situational two-minute drill type situations right now, I think our offense has executed in about every single one throughout the course of the season, at least getting three points. Um, yeah, they did. I mean, that was a really good job. To go down with, you know, the analytics will tell you that the likelihood of getting points once you start getting under a minute when you have to start a drive from, you know, at your own 25, there's not a high percentage that you're going to get points there. And so for them to – String together a drive and execute and get down there. Now again, we missed we missed the long field goal, but they stemmed into an illegal look where you can't cover up the center, and it got us five more yards. And then credit to our freshman kicker to to knock that one. That was a great job by him. Uh, but the fact that to execute in that that you know that situational football, to give yourself a chance at points and to get three points right before the half, yeah, that's huge. That's huge. So it was a great job by them in that situation. You all have been, you know, relatively clean on special teams from, you know, last season and now, you know, especially in that South Carolina game. What have you thought of the job, you know, uh, Eric has done since he's kind of transitioned more into that special teams role uh, these last two years? Yeah, Coach Mealy's done a really good job. Uh, you know, with the, <laughs> with how good kickers are kicking it nowadays, right? I mean, it, the the exception is to actually have a return, right? Um, I think the last game, right, every single kick from both sides was a touchback. And so... When you get those opportunities, you got to make them count. We have done a good job of that, obviously, with two lose return yardage. Uh, Xavion, again, also as a punt returner. And yeah, we, we, special teams have, have performed up to our expectations, and we need them to continue to find ways to make momentum shifting, game changing plays. But he's, he's done a really nice job with that unit. Uh, 
where do you see things right now regarding the, the Sam linebacker spot? We saw a lot of J.P. Purvis last week in, in place of Deshaun Page. Yeah, I think we're week-to-week -week evaluation of who who's executing, doing their job at the highest level, and who, do, who deserves to go out there and, and play the majority of the snaps. Uh, you know, J.P. was out there quite a bit. John Lewis played snaps, right? Deshaun has played snaps. Deshaun really has been like a swing guy for us because he can play Sam, but he also can – play inside linebacker and kind of spell uh, Buki and Jet a little bit. And so um, to wear that many hats is is valuable within our defense. And so like I imagine most teams across the country, right, we, we get the game film, you grade it, you evaluate it, and then you make a determination on who deserves more or less playing time in the following week. Zach, uh, the offense goes from the performance against LSU to Saturday where it was just unbelievably explosive. I mean, what does a performance like that kind of do, you think, for like the confidence of you know, Kevin Barbe, Will, and kind of the rest of your guys? And do you think that could be something that could be helpful moving forward, you know, coming off a performance like that? Uh, I hope we draw confidence from it. I mean, obviously, you, you gain confidence because you put in the work, you prepare – you do all the little things that go into execution and performing well, and then you actually go play a game, and you see that in your results, and so then you draw confidence that going through that process, right, checking every box, following the steps, we, I mean, because we all preach that that is necessary to having success and executing on Saturdays, right? To see that in your results, you should draw confidence from that as a player, right? So hopefully we draw confidence from that, um, but I don't, I'm. It's simply a matter of we put in the work Monday through Friday, and then we went out, and guys had – we were clutter-free minds, play, quarterback. You see – you follow your reads. It's an open middle, and you got a one-on-one. -on -one, you air it up and, and let the ball go, and then your receiver does a good job of tracking it and making a big play. I mean, yeah, we should draw confidence from that. If we've done it once, we ought to be able to do it, do it again, right? Yeah, hopefully we draw confidence from that. We're facing awfully, awfully talented defense this week, and so um, those plays are going to be very challenging to come by. But you have to you have to find a way to generate them if you're going to give yourself a chance at scoring points. Coach, we've seen opposite ends of the spectrum on game times. The last two home games had 11 o'clock against LSU, 8 o'clock against Alabama. And next week, I understand it's back to 11 against the Western Michigan. But do you? have a preference and how do you get your team prepared for a late kickoff i don't have a preference i play whenever we gotta we gotta make sure we show up prepared and ready to go prepared and ready to go there's nothing there's nothing more enjoyable than an 11 a.m kick where you win because you got the rest of the day to enjoy it and there's nothing more miserable than an 11 a.m kick when you lose because you got the rest of the day to be angry about it right you're four games into the season now, and seven of your true freshmen have played all four games. I guess we expect them to keep playing. Have the red shirt decisions been made for most of the players? Is that just kind of an ongoing as the season develops? That's ongoing as the season develops. I don't think I don't think there's any way right now in the way college football is structured to just say that you make that decision at four games. I mean, you have four games available to play in, right? And so obviously guys who have not played in those four still have opportunities to play and still retain their red shirt. But – with injuries, with transfer portal, with, you know, just availability, your whole roster has to be ready to help at any time. You were in conversation with Steve Campbell a lot on, on Saturday night. He's on your staff, but not as an assistant coach. What's he providing for you down there on the sidelines? Oh, he's, he handles some of the analytics, right, the situational stuff that you got real nuanced, detailed analytics on, uh, whether it be – Timeout usage or fourth down, you know, what yard line is it? Maybe a statistical advantage to go for it as opposed to punt versus take a take a uh, penalty and, you know, gain more five more yards for your punt team or field goal. So, you know, again, the book that everyone references, right, uh, that's kind of taken over football. Obviously, he kind of oversees that. And so, yeah, we, we converse from time to time over what the analytics say. All right, thank you very much, Hale State. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. 
I was just I was planning to ask Will later, so I'll, I'll ask you just about he's had a lot of tip balls at the line of scrimmage this year, just from you from the per, uh, defensive lens of things. I guess is there anything he can be doing from the quarterback spot differently to, to prevent those from happening more often? Mm. Try growing six inches, but no, um, that's bad humor. I apologize. No, uh, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, obviously, because where the route, what route you're running, sometimes that puts it in the the lane of that defender versus not. I mean, you like to obviously find a throwing lane every every time you can, but there are things you can do in protection wise too. All right, I mean. Maybe you got Maybe you got to cut more guys in protection, so that way you, they either got to get their hands down to play the cut, or they're getting cut and they they can't tip those balls. Um, so yeah, that is something we're actively evaluating. Hey, look at all these tip balls. What what can we do differently? Um, so they're, they're, that's part of an ongoing evaluation, I guess, from us as coaches. Is but again, I can't I can't give you all the other than hey. Tell them pass rushers be ready for getting cut a whole lot. All right. All right. Thank you, Hale State.